Hi there, this is Pre-Calc 20 and I'm going to talk about quadratic inequalities. I'm going to start with this uh, inequation that's on the screen. This is quadratic because it's got that squared. And it's an inequality because that is an inequality sign and not an equal sign. When we solve it though, this is very similar to when we were solving quadratic equations. The process, um, and I should point out, yes, we're solving, uh, follows the same first steps in that the first thing we're going to need to do is get zero on one side. Then if possible, we factor it. If we can't factor it, we use quadratic formula, but factoring is always faster if we uh, do enough of it to get good at it. After we factor it, set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. So then we'll have some x values. Now here's where things are a little bit different because it's an inequality. When we solved equations, once we knew our, our x values, typically two x-intercepts, right? Two x values, we were done. However, with an inequality, we're shading. We're either shading in between those or we're shading outside of those. And we figure that out in a couple of different ways. One way is to use a number line. to identify and test for shading. And then the last thing we're going to do is based on what we can see on that number line, we're going to write our solution. Okay. And that solution is important because we're supposed to solve, we better end up with a solution. So let's move that in equation down here. and see if we can solve it. So we're going to solve. We need zero. I like the squared term positive because it makes my, my everything happy when I go to factor it. So I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to move everything over to it. Now to move those things over there, I subtract them from both sides. If I'm subtracting the uh, inequality sign stays just how it is. It's all good. Remember, if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, that sign has to turn around so the alligator swims the other way. Since we were just subtracting, it's all fine and dandy. There it is. I've got my zero on one side. If I don't have zero, I can't do the rest of the steps. So now we've got to factor it. You could use method of decomposition for this, but this is actually pretty easy to do what I call factor by inspection. 3x squared, we can only get that by taking 3x times x. And 5, we can only get by multiplying 5 and 1. So it's either 5 and 1 or 1 and 5. And if we're going to get a 14, it's going to be this way. Because that's going to give me a 15 and a 1, which I can use to make 14. And I need a negative 15 plus 1 to get negative 14. Once it's factored, I set each factor equal to 0. Notice I'm using equals here because I'm finding values that are x. Um, and if I solved each of these, I would get two lovely numbers. If this was an equation, those would be the solutions to my quadratic equation. Because it's an inequation or inequality, I now need to think about where is it shaded. So on a number line, and I'm going to put that right here. There's those two numbers. Now know that when we start talking about a quadratic function inequality in a minute, um, these are going to be, or this whole thing is going to be the x-axis. These are the x-intercepts. So we either have a, a quadratic that is opening up and hits those two, or it's opening down and hits those two. In this case, we know because our a value is positive, this is opening up. The question is, is it shaded inside of that quadratic? In other words, in between these two values? Or is it shaded outside of the parabola, which would then lead it to be shaded on either side of those? That's what we're trying to figure out. And how do we do that? We test them. We have to test this region and this region and this one. So all we need to do is pick any number that is in this part of the, of the 
x or of the number line. So a number smaller than negative one third, and a nice one is just negative one. I am going to put it back into the original quadratic that we had up here. And I'm going to put a question mark on the end because what I'm trying to do is find out, is this true? Negative one squared times three is just three. And I want to know, is that less than, and if I do the math on the other side, I get negative nine. Is three less than negative nine? No, it's not. Now trick, if you were on a, writing an exam and you're out of time, odds are if this section of, of the number line is not shaded, then the part of it that is, is going to be in here. So if you're out of time and you want to get it done quick, that's what you're going to do. We have time and we're supposed to show all of the testing and the work. So I'm going to go ahead and, and test all three regions. In between negative one third and five, I like to use zero because the math is super easy then. And that's going to add, and what I'm finding out is, is zero less than five? Yes, it is. So I know right now for sure I'm going to be shading in this middle. Now, one thing I should point out in this quadratic, that was a less than sign, not a less than or equal to sign. So if you were going to actually shade it on this number line, which you don't have to do, but when you get to calculus, you're going to have to do it. What you would do is you'd put an open circle here and an open circle here because those numbers are not included and then you're going to be shading. We still have to test this top region though and find out whether this also gets shaded. So you pick any number bigger than five and I'm gonna go with six and then I'm gonna to have to grab a calculator probably. We'll see how my brain does today. And we're gonna test, is that true? Oops, I forgot that one there. 36 times three would be 90 and 18 would be 108. Is that less than 89? No, not shaded up there. So this shaded part in here is my solution, but for this course, we need to write it as a solution set. Those squirrely parentheses that look like a squashed face, those mean solution set. So the solution set for this are X values in between two numbers. So we need a number, we need X in between two numbers in our answer. The smaller number here is negative one third. The bigger number is five. Now the catch is what do we do with the signs? And I'm going to move X over to the middle because I'm a little fussy. Can X be negative one third? No. So I know there's no equal sign, but X is bigger than one negative one third, less than five. And there's my solution set. Okay. Now what if, and I got to move my other screen too, just so I can make sure that I'm teaching you everything you need to know. What if this was given as y equals this or this? And instead of solve, it said graph it. Now we've done all of the algebra up here that would be involved, but some things that, that trip, trip students up, I guess, this and this, mean the same thing. They're just talking about a function. And when we go to put this on a graph, the catch is we need some anchors. We need to know where some things are. What are nice sorts of things? X intercepts. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to write this on here that these are basically the same. And when we go to find X intercepts, we want it. Um, that means find X values where Y is zero. So really what are we doing? Oops. And I'm going to, I'm not starting this over for, for my silly little error up here. I'm going to fix it instead. Those were greater than, right? Moving up to check. Yes. Yes, they were. So now what we have are, if we put zero in for y, I have zero is greater than three x squared minus 14 x minus five, right? And we're supposed to graph 
we're finding x-intercepts. Well, we already know our x-intercepts. We found them up there on the other page. We know our x-intercepts are at negative one-third and five. So to sketch this, oh, let's go. like so and i'm going to go ahead and say well at negative one third so let's go one two three oops and on the other side i'm going to have one two three four five now i didn't stop at negative three it has nothing to do with that one third but at negative one third and let's go with a different color. I have an x-intercept. And at 5, I have an x-intercept. We know because a is positive, this opens up. We know because this has no equal sign that this graph is dotted. So the quadratic... is something like that. However, because it's an inequality, I need to shade it somewhere. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. You could go back and do a number line analysis, just like we did in the first one, test it out, and this means it's shaded in between those values. So in this case, it would be inside the parabola. If, however, you hadn't had that other page done already and you're looking at this, the easy way is to pick a number somewhere and I love using zero, zero, right? If I take this function, y is greater than 3x squared minus 14x minus 5, and I put zero, zero in for it, and I test it, is zero greater than negative 5? Yes, it is. That means zero, zero is in the shaded part. So it's, in this case, when we're looking at the whole graph instead of just the x-axis, there's only two regions. There's inside the parabola and outside the parabola. So if this point right here is shaded, I know I need to shade inside the parabola. This in here is the solution set. So if you had, um, that's why we could write it this way up here. This is the solution set. This on this curve is where it, it was um, shaded. That's where, it, that's the solution to it. I think that covers off that question. Now, what if craziness, what if I give you the graph? And I say, write the inequality. What in the world do we do? Well, we take everything that we've learned in probably half of this course and we pull her all together and we say, okay, shading. So it's an inequality. Solid line. Oops. Not solid line. Solid line. So it's either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. We know that that equal to part has to be there because it's solid. It's a parabola. So we know it's quadratic. Quadratic means, hey, we know how to write equations of quadratics. We have that magic equation. So I'm going to write that down one more time and I'm going to fill in what I know. I can see a lovely vertex on this parabola at negative one, negative three. So I know that. And if you stopped right there, you're going to get part marks, but we can figure out a, and we can do a better job than an equal sign, right? Again, if you're out of time on a graph, guess what that sign should be. 
probably because it's on the outside, it's greater than or equal to, especially since we know that the shaded area is going up and up and up forever. But we're going to figure it out. But if you're stuck guessing, guess smart. Now we need another point on this graph. There's a nice lovely y intercept. We know x is 0, y is negative 5. Now what are we going to use that for? We're going to use it to find a. So negative 5 is my y. 0 is my x, which is lovely because it makes the math really easy because 0 plus 1 is 1, squared is 1, times a is a. I add 3 to the other side, so a is negative 2, and I'm going to write this down the same. This still isn't done. This still isn't right. This is the equation of just the curve, of the parabola line in here, right? It's not the equation including the shaded part. How do we figure out which way is which? What I would do is I would start by guessing. There's my guess. Oops. And now that I have a guess, so really what I'm doing is I'm testing that. And what point am I going to test in it? I'm going to test 0, 0 because the math is easy. Is this true? If this is true, then this is the right equation. Is 0 less than or equal to 0 plus 1 is 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 5? Yes, it is. So I know this is the inequation for that, that graph. And in fact, I on a page somewhere over where you can't see it. Oh, maybe I don't. Nope, I'm wrong. I don't. I thought I had it graphed already, and I don't. But there's the equation of, of that inequality, and that's all there is to it. So um, if you know it's quadratic and you're writing an equation, don't forget about this magic stuff that we learned earlier in the course.